Welcome to another edition of Lombardi's Legends Podcast. I'm Wags. With me, as always, is Dane. And tonight, we got another continuation of our off-season special guest. Um, and we had TJ Slayton, rookie defensive tackle from Florida, join the show. Dane, I love this guy. I was super excited to get him on before he got on, and he delivered. So, folks... You're going to want to listen to this one, and you're going to want to share this one uh, with anyone that is not listening to us already, uh, because TJ is just an awesome interview, and I'm super stoked that he's on the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, I, I mean, he mentioned this is his first interview he's ever done uh, as a, an NFL player, first podcast, so we're really honored to be able to get him on. Uh, he's hilarious, great guy, off. Uh, audio and when we pressed record it was just a continuation really cool guy and he's a heck of a football player too so he's a guy that I think that um, you know the, the average Packer fan um, you know might know him as a fifth round pick and I think that uh, by the end of the season the average Packer fan is going to know him as the starting tackle for the Green Bay Packers I really think he has that talent yeah, it really could we will see I mean I don't want to put too much pressure on him up front but Honestly, just I would be really surprised if he doesn't make pretty much an instant impact out on the field. Uh, this dude can ball. Um, and just in talking to him, I think he's got the right energy, right mentality. You know, he's very coachable, talked about. He had uh, a few different position coaches in college. So he's used to making that transition and, and working with, with different uh, coaches and different personalities and learning different systems and styles. So I think that has really helped him early on in making this transition to the NFL. And uh, um, I think, you know, he's going to be someone to watch out for. If he can stay healthy, knock on wood, I think he's going to be someone. I fully agree. Um, I don't know if he'll be starting at the beginning of the year, but I certainly would not be surprised at all if he's, you know, making an impact on Sundays from week one. Yeah, I, I mean, I was smiling the entire interview. Uh, he's just, he's a funny guy. He's super personable. I, I think he's going to be a big addition, uh, not only to the team on the field, but I, I think as well uh, in the locker room uh, and in the community. He's just kind of got that energy that uh, a lot of Packer fans are going to feed off of. I, I really think he's got the makings of a fan favorite. Infectious, absolutely. I mean, he... He kind of owned the room uh, when he came out and jumped on with us. So, you know, you need guys like that. You can't have an entire locker room of guys <laughs> like that. But, uh, you know, and I don't say that in a pejorative way because uh, he seems like a good dude. But, um, you know, uh, I, I really just enjoyed uh, getting to know him a little bit. So, uh, folks, check out his clothing line. So, so he's a good follow on Instagram and social. So check him out and uh, give him a shout out. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy him. So without further ado, let's get to the interview. Dane, do you have anything else to add before we get started? No, just thanks. Uh, please share, rate us on uh, wherever you're listening to this or if you're watching on YouTube and uh, tell your friends about it. The season's coming up real quick. So it was an honor to talk to TJ Slayton. Uh, so without further ado, uh, TJ Slayton, defensive tackle for the Green Bay Packers. Go Pack Go! Go Pack Go! With us now is a very special guest, Packers defensive lineman, TJ Slayton. TJ, how you doing tonight, man? Uh, I'm doing good, man. Just, I'm excited, you know, to be on this and uh, just be with y'all, you know, just get the experience of doing my first uh, official uh, pro NFL uh, interview. Well, very good. We're honored to kick it <laughs> off for you. Um, and we're super pumped to have you on, too. Uh, you yes, know, sir. We're not just saying this, TJ, because you're a guest on the show. Dane can attest to this. When we drafted you, and we say we like we're part of the Packers, right? Um, <laughs> Dane and I were both super pumped. We're really excited about all you guys that we brought in. But I was like, that's the guy. That's the guy what we want. So we're really excited to talk to you tonight, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It was really exciting uh, during that whole moment. Uh, it was just like a lot of nerves rushing, a lot of uh, frustration at the same time. But, you know, I'm glad I'm in the place I am. 
uh, I'm happy to be in that environment and being on uh, that winning team. For sure. So, you know, just bigger picture, TJ, we always like to ask, not just the process, and we'll, maybe we'll get into that a little bit more, but have you had a moment where you've been able to reflect and it feels real to be able to realize, wow, I'm a Green Bay Packer. So what's that like for you, man? Yeah, man, that moment is, is surreal. Uh, you know, I have those moments, like, all the time. You know, I don't know if other rookies have those moments all the time, but I have those moments all the time. It's like walking into that building, it's just like, it's just a crazy feeling. It's like, yo, like, I'm I'm in the league. Like, you know, like, I'm a, a professional athlete. Like, like, what? Like, this is crazy. Like, and it's like, and then it's crazy because, like, I'm a Florida boy and, like, and I'm not, like, any Florida boy. Like, I'm from down south. Like, I'm from the bottom of Florida. And, like, now I'm going, like, all the way to the top of the United States. So it's just, like, damn. Like, I'm going so far. It's, like, it's different weather. Like, the time is different. So, like, doing all that research and, and really knowing, like, how the seasons work and, like, you know, the, the, how big the town is. It's, like, yo, like, this is what I'm really going into. It's, like, and then it's, like. Like I, like I said again, it's like I'm in the league now. Like I'm in the NFL, like places where a lot of people can't get and like places like where people make their careers in these places. Like it was just a crazy feeling. Like I have that feeling like every other day, like when I think about it. Do, do you own a winter coat yet? That's that's my first question because it gets I cold. I don't have any winter coats yet, but I have some – pretty thick jackets <laughs> <laughs> i got a well, i got a bunch of varsity jackets uh you know those pretty thick uh and, and layered up so i got a couple of those but uh far as really thick winter coats like nah i haven't got any i need to uh, hit up a uh, north shore wreck <laughs> that's right <laughs> you might have to get i don't know if you know joe namath or joe willie style just get a big nice fur coat That'll give yeah. you some. That'll give you some warmth right? when it starts. The wind starts blowing. It's, I don't know. Layers is one thing, but it does it, get cold up here. That's the for face, sure. It's the face and the hands for me. Like it's the face and the hands. It's just too. Those get cold. Oh my God! I'm freezing. Yeah. Real talk. <laughs> we'll send you some hand warmers. Those are the the deal right there. The hand warmers are the big deal. I need uh, some. I need some. Yeah, the Cabela's right next to Lambeau Fields. Just got them, got them in, in uh, major packages. Uh, so, what have you been to Green Bay yet, uh, TJ? Have you been up to? You've been there for mini camp, obviously. What's your first impression yeah. of the city itself? Oh, uh, when I first, my first impression is when I got there. I, I expected to be like super cold already. So it's like <laughs> when I got there, my first thought was coming off the plane was like, oh, it's warm. I was like, okay. It's cool. I like I wore the perfect things, like you know, a little short sleeve shirt, some some sweats. I was like, okay. And then when I got outside, when I got outside, it was like it was nothing. It was like nothing around. It was like a whole bunch of land and like wheat fields. I'm like, bro, where am I? <laughs> where am I? Like, because I'm used to the city, you know, fast traffic, a lot of lights. And it's like, where am I? Like, I don't know where I am. It's like, what is this? I've never like seen this type of like scenery before. And like my first time going down to the strip, it was like, I'm driving on these long roads. There's no houses around, just nothing but grass, it's just clear skies everywhere. Then when I hit the strip, it's just like, okay, now this is where all the stuff is. Like this is what I'm used to seeing, like a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff moving around. But that was like the, the craziest thing like that it hit me when I hit it when I stepped out of side that airport and it was like nothing when I was like yo like yeah. I've ne never seen this before like why are there so many fields everywhere like why is like nothing built in these in these spaces <laughs> it's like oh man yeah TJ I don't know if the coaching staff would buy this as an excuse but Green Bay might be the only NFL city where on the way to practice, a tractor could slow you down and make you late. So I'm not <laughs> suggesting that is a good excuse, but I, it's actually plausible. You never know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, uh, that was one of the things I was thinking about because, you know, being up there already, like being with the vets and, and being uh, 
intertwined with the older guys and them, you know, giving me a little bit of knowledge of how the city works is they told me about the track business. Like, yo, what? They could they could take to how long? It's like, like, yo, if you're not like early, like the tractors can set you back like 20 minutes. Like, that's how much snow they be having to move off the roads. I'm just like, no way. Like, no way. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, I'm gonna be having to be leaving like two hours before, like during when it when it starts to snow. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Have you ever played in snow before? Never. 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 Never played in snow. Never sneak. Never even seen it. No kidding. So this is going to be a brand new experience. You've never seen snow. Like that's yeah, brand new experience, brand new scenery. Like everything is going to be brand new. (laughs) It's crazy, man. I don't know. I'm ready for it though. You, I'm ready for. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I think the, the deal is, and you'll learn this from your teammates quickly, and Wags and I talk about this a lot on the podcast, no sleeves. No matter how cold it is, we always find that the guys can't wear sleeves. We'll, we'll see them, uh, during, you know, your teammates during the playoff games, we go to the games, and, you know, no one's wearing sleeves out there. Yeah, that's uh, our, our G, uh, Rashawn Gary, he be telling me that all the time. He was like, bruh. the only way you're going to get used to it being cold is, like, just to go out there with no sleeves, bro. No sleeves, Vas- Vaseline and no sleeves. That's the only way you're gonna get used to it. I'm like, nah, I can't. I need the long sleeve. I need it. I need it. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> so, you grew up in Florida. Did you grow up in Florida? So, I mean, you, you played college ball in Florida, but tell us a little bit about your upbringing. We'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, I grew up I grew up in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, Fort Lauderdale. Right now, I'm in uh, West Palm Beach with uh, my girlfriend. Uh, but yeah, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, you know, in the rough parts, uh, uh, the inner city part. Uh, it was, you know, a little rough, you know, you know, gang violence and, and, and you know, the the regular stereotype of, you know, the hood and, and how it is. So, you know, growing up, I was, you know, I was in a household of three. I'm the only boy and I'm the youngest. So it was a lot of like girl power, like, oh, you do this, you do that. Like, you know, so it's like, Growing up in a household like that, man, you got to get up out of it. Like, so my whole thing, my whole MO as a child was, you know, just running the streets, you know, trying to just find something to do with my time just to occupy myself. Because, you know, I don't have any brothers and I don't want to be sitting around the house all day around girls. So it's just like, that's just pretty much what it was. You know, me just ripping, running the streets, trying to find something to, you know, get my mind off things. Uh but, you know, once I found sports, once I got into sports as uh, middle school, it kind of, like, took me away from all the things I was usually doing throughout my day. So, like, it got me, it stopped me from running the streets. Uh, it stopped me from, you know, being in the house all the time with my sisters. So I got to, like, have, like, free time and leeway to do, you know, the things that I want to do for fun without having anybody telling me I'm doing something wrong or getting in trouble. So... That was the whole, that was, that's how I grew up. That's, that was the whole thing. You know, always a good kid, though. You know, never caused anybody any trouble. Uh, you know, just, I just wanted to do something, you know. just I just wanted to do something other than sit around my sisters all day. <laughs> so, that's pretty much what it was. So, TJ, if you don't mind my asking them, um, you, obviously, you caught on with football. Was it always football or were there some other sports that, you maybe were more interested in when you first started playing sports or kind of how did that all evolve? Uh, well, for for sixth grade, I started playing football in sixth grade. Uh, I played the Optimus or where, how did I say, Little League, uh, played Little League year for one year. Um, at the time, I was too old. Like, I was older than the other kids, so I couldn't play again, like, my seventh grade year. So... That summer, you know, I just, that seventh grade summer, I went out for basketball at my school, you know, started playing basketball and in the seventh grade. And I started in that same summer, I started playing AAU and uh, traveling, you know, going up and down from Georgia to Florida to all these other states to play basketball. Uh, for two years, I, you know, I really committed to it. That I really thought that's what I was doing. Like, you know, I loved it. I had a feel for it. And then when I got to high school, uh, ninth grade came up. You know, started then I started doing two sports, so it's football and basketball. Uh, then once it was time for me to you know make that decision, I started. I started. I chose football, but um, basketball. You know, I, I really fell in love with it. You know, because after two years, after 
a middle school season and a, a AAU summer and then another middle school season and another AAU summer. Like, I just really fell into the game. You know, I really thought that's what I was going to do. Like, you know, I, I worked at it every day. Even when I wasn't around people, I worked doing this. Like, that's what I thought I was going to be doing. Like, because, you know, I loved it. Uh, but once, you know, once pretty much once football took over and then I, like, I really, like, really jumped into football, really – started to find the things like the diets the weights uh how much running you need to do like all in all I really looked into it really really committed to it really grabbed it and it kind of got rolling from there and if you don't mind my asking a follow-up to that then as you going through high school obviously going to one of the top programs in the country I'm sure you yeah. had your choice of many different programs that you could have gone to can you walk us through what that recruiting process was like for you and kind of how you know, you ultimately did made the decision to, to head to Florida? Uh, well, it didn't happen until, uh, so when I was in eighth grade, they had this thing called senior night in eighth grade, though, like, because you're leaving, going to high school. So we had a basketball game that night, and after the basketball game, I had, like, a bunch of high school coaches, like, who I never met before, like, like from all around Broward County. They come in and talk to me, and I'm just like, at the same time, I'm me there at a basketball game. So I'm just like, at the same time, confused. Like, you had a basketball game. Like, what, what are we talking about? Like, what are we doing? Like, you know, they, they're they offering me magnet programs. They offer me, like, buses to get me to and from school. Like, like, and I'm just like, what's going on? And then, like, the next day, like, my basketball coach, he's like, you know, all these schools, they want you to, you know, uh, come play, try to play football for them. And I'm just like, Football, I haven't played football in two years, like, but I still know everything I know from when I played. So it's like, you know, I'll try it. Like, I'm not, you know, not scared to try it. Like, I'll try it. Like, if it's not during basketball season, I'm going to play football. And, then, like, you know, football's not during basketball. I mean, basketball's not during football. So I play basketball when it's time to play basketball. So I'll be, at that time, I became a two sport athlete. So it was between Dillard High School and American Heritage. Uh, me personally, I chose to go to Dillard. But, you know, moms chose differently. Uh, so at first, it was like a big hassle. Like, I really didn't want to go to Heritage at first. Uh, but after a while, like, we started winning in football. And then after the year we went to state championship, it grew on me. It's like, you know, you know we're winning. Like, I don't want to lo uh, leave a winning program. So it's like, we're winning. So let's just keep it at that. So I stuck around and, and it became – something that I didn't see coming. So I'm grateful and I'm, I'm actually happy that I stayed. <laughs> that's incredible. I mean, that's incredible. I, I've got, I mean, I, I, there, there's so much to unpack here, TJ. And I, what I just have to say is you can dunk the basketball like a monster. Uh, yeah. We've seen it online. <laughs> uh, it's incredible. So those that are listening. Um, so uh, do you still pick up the ball? You still play ball? Uh, yeah, yeah, that? yeah. Yeah, I still uh, go out there and shoot and dribble and, uh, you know, dunk and whatnot. Uh, it's still there with me. Uh, now, usually when I play basketball, it's usually just for cardio. Like, I'm using it. Like, I'm using it to my advantage now. So, you know, I go to this court still, you know, play pickup, you know, just trying to get a, a good sweat in, like a good workout, you know, run and jump. You know how they say basketballs, basketball people are like the, the greatest conditioned athletes because all they do every day is just run and jump. So, you know, I just go out there. I still hoop. Uh, the, bas the, the the dunking part, I don't know. You know, the dunking part, uh, I dunked my first basketball in the eighth grade. Uh, but I don't know. Ever since I had my first one, I was just like, I always just, you know, kept trying, kept trying. But I've always been big all my life. So everybody, like, you know, I was playing basketball with days just like even the coaches, they're just like, you can't dunk, you can't dunk, you too big, you too big, you can't dunk. And then like, you know, ninth grade after football and basketball, ninth grade, when I went back into the summer and did to, to do AAU, uh, like I just like just getting more athletic, like, and like getting stronger. Like, and I was just like, it kind of picked really, it kind of hit me. I was just like, yo, like I can kind of do a lot of things that the, the smaller people can do. And then, like, then when people started catching hold, it's like, yo, you just dunked? Yo, do it again. Like, I want to see it again. Like, what? So it's just like, it's just like getting that from people. This is like, yo, like, they like to see, like, a big athletic person. So it's just like, 
embrace it. Like, embrace that you're big and athletic and, like, embrace that you're different from other big people. So, like, going into ninth grade, I didn't really realize that until, like, it clicked. And it's like, yo, like, I am very different from other people. Like, I'm 330 pounds and, like, I run a, I can run a 4-9. I can windmill a basketball. I was real close to putting it between my legs. But, like, it's like, yo, it's like, how many other people? How many other people my size can really th- say they can do this? Like, yeah, this- yeah. so when I really, when that really hit my mind, and I really grabbed and took control of it, it was like, yo, this is great. <laughs> this is great. Like, I'm getting so much more attention that other big people wouldn't get. Like, and it's just like they're not even looking at what I'm doing. They're looking at how I'm doing it. So it's just like this is crazy. So like coming into that, it was just like wow. <laughs> well, and, and I, I think to, to highlight that, uh, what you're saying here, I know that um, Packers general manager Goody called you a monster, I think, when you were drafted, which had to make you feel great. We we yeah. were saying that behind the scenes, we were excited about it. But also, uh, your, your defensive line coach at Florida, uh, uh, David Turner, right? Yeah. Um, what's your relationship with him? Because he has been singing your praises. He calls you a freakish athlete. He talks about your work ethic a lot. So it seems like you two had a really close relationship during your time in Florida. Yeah, it was close. It was good. It got really close uh, towards my senior year. Uh, when he first came to us, you know, we butted, we, we butted a lot because at the same time, going when he came to us, it was my third coach. Like, it's my third, my third position coach. It's like, Okay, like I've learned this from this coach and learned this from this coach, and now you want me to learn something totally different. So, like at first, it was yeah, at first it was a butt. At first, you know, we was we was going at each other at first, but you know, once the things calmed down and once we got to know each other, and once he really got to hone into my game, and he was telling me things I need to work on and things that people at the next level might see or have concerns about, so. Those are the things, like, those are relationships that I like. You know, he really built that. He really was, like, looking out for me. Like, not as not as just, like, an athlete, you know, as a person. At the same time, it's like, he always called me. He's always texting me. Like, so it's just, like, when it got to my senior year, everything was kind of, like, firing on all cylinders. Like, you know, it was all firing. Like, it's like he knew what I, he knew what I wanted to do, and he knew, like, how I wanted to get it, and, like, he knew the type of plays I was trying to look to make for myself and for the team. So, you know, we always had little talks like control what you can control, uh, make the plays that you can make, like, you know, do your job, like always do your job. It's just those little things that he did, the little things that he gave me is the things that's that stuck, you know. And, you know, at the same time, he's also, you know, he's a, a great man, you know. Like all the people, the young guys that we had my senior year, he was just trying to, motivate the older guys to like you know look at look after the young guys like if they have questions like talk to them like don't just like let me answer all their questions like get into their life like no like make them make them understand that you got that you got their back like you know like teach them like make them want to come and ask you questions instead of always asking me questions so like learning that is like wow like you feel me like he's not just for like himself or just for him jo- his job like so it was that was cool, you know. Once you realize that, it's like he, it was no like hard feelings, like ever. So it was like okay. <laughs> and now you're making another transition to the NFL, uh, and that process is certainly underway uh, with rookie yeah. orientation, OTAs, mini camp. So how mm-hmm. is all that? How has that whole process been going for you? Uh, that was that was a great process for me because like how I think is like. I always, like, you know, want to know what I'm doing, like, or, like, want to know the schedule or, or, like, you know, what we're going through. So, like, that experience was, like, so, like, fun and and, and uh, knowledge-sucking for me because I wanted to be in the NFL so bad, and I just couldn't wait to, like, just to go through it, you know, just to go through the experience. Like, I had interviews with coaches. They're asking me, like, you know, what are you looking forward to? Like, what do you want to do? Like, will you have goals? Like, I don't have anything. I want to see everything. I don't want. I don't want to think about surprises. I want to see everything as it come to me. Like so, it was just like hitting that field. It was like yo, like I saw the field. Like I didn't want to Google anything. I didn't want to like get a head look of anything. So when I got up there, everything was like a wow to me. Like oh, this how the locker room looked. Wow. Like this how the 
the uh this how the training room looked wow this how the cafeteria the field like everything was just like yo like i'm amazed like this is crazy like that it looks like this like everything is so well taken care of like this this is crazy so going into that ota and training uh, rookie mini camp and vet the vet mini camp it was just like eye opening like you know how the coaches work how like how they you see how their demeanors change from the classroom to the field, and then you just see how the vet, the vets work in the locker room, how they operate in the classroom, how they work on the field. It's just like, yo, like I never like I never seen anything like this. Like grown, these are grown men really getting after it. So it's just like, yo, like it, you can't you cannot just like not get hyped and energized just to go out there and do the same thing that that, that they're doing with them. So. Like that was that was my take on it. Like I loved it. Like I loved being out there with the guys and like having everybody out there. You can see everybody. Are there any guys uh, you mentioned Rashawn Gary as somebody that you chatted with? But are there any other guys, um, either in the rookie class or just in general, that you've kind of um, connected with so far uh, in in your short time in Green Bay? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, I connected with uh, a lot of a lot of teammates. Rashawn is one one of the people I I connect with really well. Uh, uh, Tyler, uh, Kiki, um, Kenny, uh, Carlos, and Jack. You know we we already tight. You know we all talk. Uh, I got some. Um, what his name was? I talked to a lot of uh, our our safeties. We all you know Kiki laugh chill. Uh, a bunch of us was in the hotel with uh, some of the vets the vet guys. And they were, they were cool, you know. They were cool people. They're, like, normal people. Off the field, they normal. Like, you know, they they talk to you, like. But then when they hit the field, it's like, they be they be so locked in. So sometimes <laughs> they don't even hear you. Like, if you ask them a question, they be like, what? What you say? <laughs> oh, yeah, I got you. Uh, you got to do this. You got to do this. Like, all right, bet. It's like, so, but yeah. off the field, like, they're so cool. Like, I went to Rashawn's house. You know, Kiki came over. We was chilling and uh, having fun and, you know, just talking to each other, like. It was cool. I love the guys. Are uh, they're fun? I like them. <laughs> and TJ, I have to imagine that with everything that's getting thrown at you, it must be overwhelming at times. I don't want to speak for you, but is oh, there yeah. one? Yeah, is there one thing that you know, either for yourself or that um, your coaching staff has tried to impart on you, just to kind of get you know help you get as locked in as possible? Uh, it's just like. The studying, like they just make sure they want to make sure you be on top of everything, make sure you know everything. Not, not for them to like. How am I trying to say it? Not for them to like try to have you frustrated, or they don't want to make you frustrated, and they don't want you to get complacent. So like, it's just all like little talk. Like, hey, how you doing? Like, how you feel about the plays? Like, do you think you got everything down? Like. Is every like is every is anything coming? Are you having to struggle with anything? So that that was was surprising to me because like in Florida, like when I first got to Florida, my older guys wasn't doing that. Uh when I first got to Florida, like everything was like, you know, find it on your own, get it on your own. So coming into people that's who really like trying to like genuinely look out for you and the players at the same time is like is it's just like it's surreal. Like I didn't even have to like have like uh, what do you say? How do you say it? I don't want to say I had like distractions or I was having complications learning everything because they break everything down for you. You know, like they try to make it as simple as, as they can. They're trying to help you as best way they can. And they're trying to help you the best way that you, that you learn. You know, they're trying to like switch things around to help them be easier for you. So those are the things that like, that really like wowed me. Like I was just like, wow. Like, you feel me? Like, y'all really trying to, like, make sure I get it. Like, you're not trying to just, like, oh, he's just another player. If he don't get it, we just going to throw him to the wayside. Like, yeah. so that's the thing that really, like, surprised me that I was just, like, yo, like, I did not see that coming, like, tight. You know, like, I did not see that coming. Like, I did not realize that y'all was going to help me the way y'all trying to help me. <laughs> like, I did not know that. So, like, that was, that was the thing that really surprised me out of everything. That's that's really fascinating insight. And what, what what's your uh, impression then of Coach Barry? He's new to all of us, new defensive coordinator. So, you know, he's new to us. We're trying to learn uh, as much, I'm sure, as some of the players are. Uh, so, uh, what what's his coaching style like so far? Uh, Coach Coach Barry, cool. I I love him. Uh, 
he just a, a fun, you know, outgoing guy who, you know, who loves the the hype, you know, who loves to get crunk. He he loves to see the energy like in us talking. Like he just the all around like he a character. He got like when I say if it's anybody who got a personality, he has one. Uh, I love him. Uh, his energy, his juice that he brings is I love it. It, it always get me hype. <laughs> And TJ, I guess I'm just kind of curious then, um, how are you feeling then heading into camp? I mean, is there um, any nerves or do you feel yeah. like the, the off-season program kind of got you pretty well situated or kind of where, where are you at, at at this point as you start going into camp here in a couple of weeks? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm, um, I'm definitely ready to get going. The uh, reason why I'm so ready to get going and it's making me nervous because I'm so ready to get going because, like, this is my first camp in the league and the reason why I'm so nervous because I don't have the schedule like I don't know what we're doing like you know like <laughs> I don't know the drills we're doing I don't know nothing but like that's why I'm so nervous like I'm not nervous to to start I'm just nervous to see what we're doing because like I've never done it before like it could be something totally different like you never know so like that's why I'm so nervous of going into camp but other than that like I'm I'm ready to go <laughs> yeah, well, like we said when before we got started, you know, and when we did start, watch out <laughs> for the tractors. And if you're on Lombardi time, you're going to be fine. So, right. you, you know, uh, just get there early and, uh, you know, you'll be you'll have plenty of time to get ready for the day. I'm sure you're going to do great out there. And we're really excited uh, to see you out there on the field, both in camp and then in the preseason as well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've got a, I, and we want to be mindful of your time. I've got a couple of questions, uh, kind of unrelated to football, uh, but we could pull it back into football. But music, uh, are you a music guy? What do you listen to before the games? I always like to get uh, recommendations. What are you into yeah. that gets you going? I'm an old soul, man. I'm an old soul. I, I love to listen to like, uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s R and B. Like you really? feel me? Like that's my thing. Uh. But you know, some I gotta throw my rap in there sometime. I gotta have my rap. I gotta have my, my NBA young boy, my, my Kodak, my, my Rob Wave. Like I gotta have that in the mix somewhere. But as far as game day, uh, when I'm on that bus, you know, I like my I like my smooth music. You know, I, I listen to my R&B. I like my smooth. Uh, but as soon as I hit the locker room, I switch the music up because okay. I gotta get my mind. The smooth music helps me relax and calm. And think about everything with a flow and everything be flowing and cool. You know, the vibe is good. But then when I hit that locker room, after I done got my mind right, after I hit that locker room, now it's all about it's all about rap music now. I'm trying to get hype for the game. I need that energy up. Like, so it's just like that's my whole thing <laughs> before well, the game. <laughs> I can feel that because you've got some energy, man. Like, I'm ready to run through a brick wall just listening to you. So, <laughs> you, you listen, to get it. You, you may not get the honors of a rookie of being the guy that's in the middle of the, the pregame huddle, <laughs> but I could see that in your future. So. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> and and I, I, I noticed when uh, we got this, those of you that are listening in the pod. Um, you, you can't see the video, but those that are watching, we saw, I think, are, you've got a clothing brand, right, DJ? Yeah, and I just, can you tell I us just about started that? my gear. I just started my gear. This is my gear. Uh, the brand, I'm getting some new stuff uh, started, but the brand name is uh, called uh, Umele. It means humble in, in Italian. My girlfriend's Italian, so I tried to incorporate some some kind of mix with me and her. So, the name of it is Umele. You say you spell it U M I L E. So it it means humble in uh, Italian. So that's what I went with. Uh, I've always wanted my uh, my uh, clothing brand since I was I want to say seven years old. Uh, it all started with like a pair of shoes. I wanted this. I wanted these pair of shoes so bad, and my mom always told me no. So. It was a song that 50 Cent came up with. He's it's called Window Shopping. So that was my thing always growing up. It's like, look at all these shoes. I want all these shoes one day. I want my shoes with my name on it, with my logo. I want to make clothes with my name. And it's and it's that been my dream since I was seven years old. So when I finally got the chance to finally come up with my own logo and started getting my own brand name. So it's like when I finally got that chance to really hone in and work on that stuff, I like I I tried to run with it. I ran with it. I want all type of merch. I want socks, 
underwear, pants, hats, like everything, like because that th those are the things you know that I've always wanted in my life. So you feel me? I also want people not just to see me as like you know an athlete. You like you feel me? Like I'm also a successful you know clothing designer. Like you feel me? Like I want to start putting more time into my clothing line because I want people to see that my clothing line isn't just casual wear. It isn't just sports wear. Like you can wear, this is like a, this is a sports shirt, like a dry fit, but you also can wear, you know, wear it to dinner. It can be casual. Like, you feel me? Like those are the things I want to do. I want to expand it. Like I want to get all type of stuff, like, you know, women's clothing. So, you know, like, like little women's crew necks, maybe like stuff like that. Well, I've always wanted my clothing line. So now that I have it, like I can't wait to like start putting more and more merch out there. Yeah, after, <laughs> after a January in Wisconsin, maybe a winter jacket, maybe some gloves too. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I see you. You got my vibe. You get my vibe. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, there's limitless opportunities. So, TJ, I've got to ask a follow up to that. Then are you? <laughs> designing a lot of the clothing is your girlfriend involved in that or you know how, how is uh, that going uh far as designs right now i'm not into it i'm not into the designing right now but i also but i have designs and ideas what i want and that would think i would think would look good you know stuff on the bag stuff on the side stuff on the sleeves you know something maybe on like the high or back of the shoulder you know something like off the wall i'm trying to do you know, something that'll grab people's attention and be like, oh, maybe, maybe this shirt will look good. I want to buy it. You know, something like just to just really just grab people and be like, hey, this looks good. This looks good enough to buy. I, I feel comfortable if I wear this. Yeah, for sure. And do you mind? If, so did you speak Italian then to you or was that a name that your girlfriend helped you with then? Nah, she, um, so I, you know, when I started uh, talking to her about the clothing line, she was like, Oh, you know, that's cool. That's cool. Like, you know, what are you going to do? Like, is it, is it just going to be the logo? Or are you going to have a name? Like, I was just like, nah, I want a name and a logo. So, I don't know. It just kind of hit me in college. I was just like, you know, we was talking about her heritage one day. And just, she was like, you know, I'm Italian. And my mom's, like, full Italian. And my dad's, like, this and this and Irish. So, I'm just like, okay, okay. And we've been together for a year and seven months. So, I thought about it. I was just like, Yeah. You know, maybe I'm I'm gonna incorporate you in it some way, somewhere, uh, because her mom loves to cook Italian food, like loves to cook Italian food and make these things. So I was just like, hey, I'm gonna put something Italian in that 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 means something to me. You feel me? So she's always coming to me like, oh, you're humble. You're really humble. You you know you you uh, go through situations that some people would be freaking out about. Like, you know, you always try to keep yourself humble and look uh, to the solution. So I was just like, hmm, let me think about it. So I like looked up uh, humble and I was looking like the translation for humble. And then I clicked. I was like, let's make it in Latin because she's Italian. So that's how I'm going to be able to incorporate her into the brand name. So I was like, okay, since I have the logo, which is going to give you the name. What, you feel me? So it's like, since you're always saying I'm humble and you're seeing how you love that I'm so humble, let's just do it as that, an Italian word for humble. <laughs> so that's how it came to be. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. See, we get the backstory, folks. That's why you listen to Lombardi's Legends. We're finding out a lot of stuff tonight. Um, li listen, TJ, one last question that I have for you. You've been so gracious with your time. Um, you're coming to a team that has uh, gone to back-to-back -back NFC championship games. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to we'd like to make it a third, and we'd like to go to the Super Bowl this year. Um, I, you are going to be a big contributor. We really believe that to the team this year, uh, both mm -hmm. on the field and off the field. There's no doubt you bring an energy uh, and a presence that I think is going to be infectious to the fan base. So, what are your goals? going into this season personally, um, you know, in your first NFL season? Well, uh, like I said before, like the goal part, like because I just got here and I don't really, you know, really know the scheme and how the timing works and who's coach going to play and who's coach going to play here. So that's why I said I'm, I'm looking forward to all surprises. Like I want to see everything head on. But really, I just want to contribute – 
any way I can. You know, if that's special teams or defense, uh, I want to do everything that coach asks me to do. Um, you know, I just want to have – I just want to be that player who's really focused and locked in on the team and what the team needs and trying to help the team to win and get to where we need to be. So, you know, that's my whole thing, you know, coming in. I just want to help. I want to contribute wherever I can, you know, wherever, wherever I can to help this team. And and if if that's playing, you know, and playing a lot uh, and coach give me a higher role than what I expected, well, you know what, I'm going to grab it by the horns and we're going to ride it. We're going to ride it till we get all the way to the Super Bowl, and that's the goal. Yes. Get to the Super Bowl, bring one back to this that town, and we're going to rock it all the way. <laughs> TJ, we are so pumped um, for the season to start, see you out there. Um, and I think we're going to let you go here in a second. But before we do, can you give us a go, Pack Go? Oh, yeah. Go, Pack Go. Go, Pack Go. And I'm going to say it with some enthusiasm because I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, TJ, for joining. And we really appreciate it. We'll give Thank you a shout out when we're up in camp and uh, best of luck and, um, you know, um, go get him this season. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all having you. me. Thanks, CJ. Go back, go. Thanks, CJ. Right horseshoes and hand grenades. There ain't no second place in Lambo.